to another video feature of the Immersive World's Handbook. I am in uh, Las Vegas and I'm taking you through here the uh, redesign of the area out in front of the New York, New York and the Monte Carlo on this very windy night. So uh, let me take you around for a look. Okay, and so we'll begin the tour here with some of the video footage I shot and I'll supplement this with my stills. Um, for me, this is an exciting um, area to talk about in terms of the redevelopment of public space in Las Vegas. And I think we're seeing some dramatic changes over the years in terms of how space is uh, conceptualized and executed. And so you see this certainly, this um, opening up of the space here. I think you can see this is my 2015 shots. Uh, the project is not quite completed. Uh, massive undertaking. If you visited Vegas in the last uh, two to three years, you know, there's been a lot happening. And prior to that, of course, we saw the development of um, City Center, which also was a, a big development. And um, I think what we see is some paralleling here in terms of this efforts with what's happened at the link. Now, back in the day, in the early 2000s, I dug up some of my old photos here. You may have remembered this was a very crowded space. There was a La Quinta there and a Caro's. And on the site of the current uh, city center, specifically the Mandarin Oriental, uh, you had the old Holiday Inn boardwalk, which I always thought was kind of quaint myself, the, the only Coney Island theme anywhere on the Strip or Fremont Street for that matter. But, um, you know, closed in, in 2006 and certainly wasn't uh, successful. And then that did pave the way for the massive undertaking at city center. This shot here, this panorama, if you are viewing this, you can see that this gives you a sense of how space has been changed on this side of the strip. And going back to the early 2000s, as I mentioned, this area that we're talking about now, this redevelopment in front of New York, New York, and Monte Carlo, this was a very crowded space and I think a very lackluster space. Uh, even some of the entrance areas, as I'll talk about later, such as the Monte Carlo, weren't well defined as well. I think that was the case outside of the New York, New York, uh, they had the ESPN zone, but I always thought that the signage and the placement of that venue uh, lent itself to some cluttering up of the space. In the redevelopment that we're seeing today then, as you can see conceptualized in this artist drawing, is moving beyond that clutter and opening up the space itself. Uh, this also gives you a sense of what is happening in terms of the dramatic changes. Now during my visit in 2005, I haven't seen all this, this is not finished, but this is the artist's rendering of what we'll see eventually in this space. I suggest to you that one of the redesigns that's going on here is the opening up of space. And I'll mention this at the end of the video, but we're um, creating spaces on the strip that are outdoor spaces that are more open, friendlier to pedestrians and so forth. Now, I, I was looking at old, old photos and I was actually surprised because I had forgotten that when the construction was going on the last few years, the, in the shot from the early 2000s and now today, 2015, you see some change, but in a sense, my surprise in looking at my old photos back in the day was that, as I show you on the left and right here, um, it wasn't as maybe dramatic a, a change as I had um, recalled in terms of just thinking about the construction. Now, the space just forward past the bridge and to the left, of course, that is going to be a dramatic opening up. Now, you do see what they've done is that they have created this leveling effect and a much more pedestrian courtyard effect with um, a park-like feel. Now, the thing I think going on here is more dramatic entrance spaces. I really enjoy what they've done with the New York, New York here in the 2015 versions. Again, you see here more of a park-like feel giving you the intimacy. At the same time, you have the dramatic branded um, entrance spaces that we recall maybe were on the other side of the street back with uh, m and World and the old All-Star Cafe. And the other interesting thing for me, if you look at the old footage here of New York, New York, and the footage today, you can actually go behind the Statue of Liberty. So they really have done a major overhaul of the whole area. Other thing I think is going on, and we see the brand new Shake Shack, the incredibly popular restaurant, is the creation of more social space. And you actually see this inside venues like Shake Shack. If you go in, it's a very bustling place, and the design is absolutely marvelous in terms of how they've worked this out in the interior. The Starbucks, just at the New York, New York as well, same feel. I like the outdoor space how this opens things up, it creates a social pedestrian area, and then also on the inside as well. So there are things happening on the interior here at New York, New York, 
uh, in Monte Carlo as well as uh, at the link I'll talk about later. This is another artist rendering and it gives you a sense, I think we're seeing, it looks like the Shake Shack there, I'm sort of disoriented, but um, more of a park-like feel. And, and so this is a dramatic change I think for Las Vegas in terms of what we think of the strip. There's also dramatic new landscape design. This is part of the redesign just in front of the Monte Carlo and I really appreciate the work they've done here with landscaping, with fountains, with some of the tile mosaics and so forth, and I think it's it's quite effective overall. And as I've been mentioning, this is certainly a trend we see happening at the link, um, the Caesars property just down the strip, as you see some um, images here. We're creating new pedestrian space, new types of businesses, new exterior facades, and an overall opening up of social space, as you see of this dramatic view to the high roller, and we've also seen this at Bally's with the Grand Bazaar shops and you can watch another video I did on that. And of course for so many years the space that has challenged I think the hegemony, the power of the Vegas Strip in terms of its control of space has been Fremont Street and Fremont itself has been uh, undergoing a dramatic revitalization you see here with a new Denny's which looks nothing like uh, the old version and then you can also in my other video I talk about the downtown container mall which is I think a, a rather remarkable way to create new pedestrian and social space and another important tendency we might address in this transformation of social space is the challenge to the traditional indoor space in Las Vegas. You're seeing here the Miracle Mile shops, Planet Hollywood, former Aladdin, certainly one of the more important indoor malls as well as uh, Caesars Palace Forum shops and in the past of course a lot of this has taken place on the interior and now we're seeing a transformation outdoors, more outdoor social spaces. The link certainly is an example of that Fremont Street before and then of course today this Monte Carlo New York New York redesign is another example of this trend. And as an aside I was viewing this conceptual model of City Center and it occurred to me that with City Center there isn't necessarily a design for pedestrian space so maybe this is some a response in a sense to what didn't happen at City Center. Now I've mentioned this in the past but I think it, traditionally you can think of a traffic moving north and south on the Las Vegas Strip. Of course east and west into the casinos themselves and now maybe we're seeing a movement on the strip of space and pedestrian space being moved not just throughout the casinos but east west throughout many of these pedestrian spaces and so in this review of the opening up of space and the redesign of public space in Las Vegas I think maybe we can reflect on the dramatic scale of the transformation that we're witnessing what we've seen going on at Fremont Street uh, certainly at the new Container Park Mall there, continuing in the efforts to open up outdoor space and pedestrian space and new dramatic space with the high roller at the link. And now today as we're looking at the area in front of New York, New York and the Monte Carlo, we see a similar significant level of transformation. And we've addressed today some of the, uh, the scope of this transformation and I think maybe what it will entail for the future of the Las Vegas Strip. And for me this is an exciting era of development because I think we're seeing some new things going on. We're uh, moving away from the old of Las Vegas and ushering in a new and interesting era in terms of redesign of space in a material sense and also in the social pedestrian sense. So please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.